Hi guys, it's Kimberly and I am here to show you how I do the root a loop method on my reborn baby doll. And I'm basically just um, using this beautiful alpaca hair, which I really love. It's a mohair. And um, basically what I do is I just, ugh, my dog he never stopped barking. Um, I use this beautiful, um, gorgeous mohair that I like the alpaca lately. That's becoming my favorite. Um, it's usually listed as a alpaca or a Surrey alpaca. Um, and I'm really loving it. It's so soft and shiny. I, I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but it's just so nice. Now I've cut this one kind of short because I'm doing a, a younger baby. It doesn't have to have really long hair. And um, so I have found that this neck pillow, that my husband hurt his neck once a long time ago, and I've washed this pillow and just had it sitting around, and it has actually become a great rooting pillow. I usually put a washcloth on it, but not today. Um, at least I had one, but I ended up stuffing it in my doll's neck. Now I have heated um, a sock full of uh, rice and it, it's a, actually a pantyhose filled with rice and it is inside of her head and because her head is so big I had to stuff in a towel to keep it um, keep the heat in sometimes I'll just stuff like a scrunchie in in the bottom just to make it kind of keep the heat in better keeps it from escaping and then um, now I usually start with the crown of the head and I'm sorry, my Maltese dogs never shut up. They just bark and bark and bark all the time. They're bored. Life is just not exciting enough for them. And so they've got to bark their head off 24-7. And um, But anyways, um, what I usually do is I start right here around the crown. I, I mark my head with chalk, basically, and um, a large piece of sidewalk chalk. And um, I mark the crown area. I mark all around the entire... Um, edges of the, of the uh, hair where I want it to be and um, I know you can't really see the chalk anymore I've kind of it's kind of wiped off over time um, I started rooting her last night I know her hair looks kind of crazy she looks like a crazy troll baby but she's gonna be so cute when she's done um, anyway so I start rooting around the front well actually after I do the crown I start rooting uh, around the front. I go all the way around the bottom. And as you can see, I've kind of just done the outline of the hair. You know, it's hard to tell because I'm doing blonde. And um, anyways, then I slowly, uh, I mean, you can start anywhere you want. I kind of work from this uh, front of the crown back. And then I fill in the holes on the sides after... I go down, um, boy, this is really not the best here. Let me see. I go down, and I'm watching myself on the camera so I can see what I'm doing. I basically go down the back middle of the head. I do kind of do the area where, like, so they would be apart to make sure I don't miss anything and that she's um, real thickly rooted around the crown, on, around the crown where um, I'm going to do a lot of parting and stuff. So that when her hair is parted, um, that it looks good and there's no bald areas, you know, so that whoever the mommy is can take the baby and do any kind of hairstyle they basically want with this baby. So um, and I know the lighting isn't superior here, but um, basically the baby will be able to have a part wherever the mommy wants it. I try to root um, fairly um, thick, in, thick enough that it looks like a baby and yet she's got lots of um, hair for the mommy to play with and comb or style. Um, sometimes they'll have enough hair for like, um, what do I want to say? And I look terrible or I'd totally show you myself. Um, enough hair that she can um, style it, play with it, whatever. You'll have to excuse my messy house. It's super messy right now um but anyways uh so i start at the beginning i work my way back and i root really well all all up in this area as far as um 
thick enough that they can part it anywhere. I, I always brush the hair around. I wet it down. I play with it and make sure um, I use a spray that I've made. I basically wet the hair down. And, and while I'm working on it, I basically just try to test areas. Like right here, I can see a little area where I might want to add a little bit more hair right in there. I basically brush it around. Quiet dogs. Shh. Quiet. Ah. Anyways, but I, I just kind of check that the person who gets this baby could basically like make a part anywhere they want and that it would look good you know to the to the mommy so you can see that even though and i'm sorry she's not finished but even though um you know, can you see that i don't know if it's focused in enough but even though um her i parted it right there Look, she's got enough hair that it looks pretty good. Now, I might go over that area, check that, you know, maybe right here could use a couple more hairs, or right here. Now, and then I'll do a part down the middle, and, you know, add in any hair that might need a little bit more. And so I'll go down, and, and I do see a little area right there, so I'll basically, like, take my hair, which I have cut smaller because I'm doing shorter hair and um, the longer hair okay. I have to apologize I have five Maltese and they used to be able to be out in my house and they used to be really good and well trained and I I do breed Maltese from time to time Anyways, the Maltese that I have um, used to be really good dogs, and until I got this one little guy, um, Cajun, I got him from a breeder in um, uh, North Carolina. She's a really nice lady, but he just really never had a lot of good manners. And so, because he's now made himself alpha of all my other four, of, of my other dogs, um, they all act like a bunch of idiots. So, um, basically there's no control over my dogs anymore. They're just out of control and I love them, but they're driving me insane. They bark, 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 bark. Never, I can't let them out of their, um, kennels while they're in the house because they'll pee all over everything because he is an untrained dog. And even though all my other dogs have self-control because he's untrained they follow his lead so if I don't watch them like a hawk they'll probably pee on something and then they just run around and get into everything you know so anyways um, going back to this hair you can see that I have rooted it so that no matter how her hair is parted that it will look like a nice root and it won't look sparse um, I do check different areas. Now I will be cutting this hair later, but you can be quiet dogs. Um, anyways, so basically they're mad cause they're in their kennel and they don't want to be in their kennel. Um, and I don't want to have to put them in their kennel, but if I don't put them in their kennel, they'll be all over me 24 seven. So anyways, um, I basically just check each area, like as far as the parts, make sure they look good. Um, I try different hairstyles. I do trim the hair at the end and give her a nice haircut and um, that's nice and that leaves the the mommy lots of uh, room or to play with the hair. Like right now it's really long, but I'll probably cut it to about right here. So that it's about an inch and a half to two inches. And then that'll give the mommy lots of um, ability to play with the the hair to do things with it. I know it's just it's such pretty mohair. It's just so shiny and beautiful. And and it's just so soft looking. I love this mohair. And um, I found several sources for it. I'm not gonna share my sources. No, I will. <laughs> okay, so I got this hair from gobaby.com. Um, now their hair has been really good, um, but I do have one little issue, which I just got some mohair that seemed to have some 
dirt or deep flea dander in it, but the rest of their hair has just been absolutely beautiful. So I'm pretty happy regardless. I washed that hair that came that had the, the dander. I don't know if it was just like dirt or something, but I don't like anything that has to do with bugs. So it freaked me out a little bit. I wasn't even sure if it had bugs and I didn't even want to say anything really. <laughs> But I do think that if you're selling hair, mohair, or any other kinds of hair, it should be clean, washed, and without any dander or bugs or anything in it, grass or otherwise, unless you're buying it raw, you know. But anyways, um, so getting back to baby hair, uh, the way that I like, my favorite way to root hair um, is to root a loop. And I use these tiny little, um, this one is from McPherson Crafts. I know it's hard to see it. It's from McPherson Crafts. And um, honestly, it is a great needle, but I found that um, there is another place where I get my needles that I like. It doesn't have the rubber on it, but I really like their needles. This is a one, um, this is a 36... G, I think, or something like that, 32, no, 36G. It's okay. I like these. They're nice. They're easier to hold on to, and I do not use them with any kind of other tool um, as far as like a, a holder because those kind of hurt my hand. I like it without the tool, but you might want to buy like the little wooden knob that you can insert it into. A lot of people like those. But anyways, I take my mohair. I cut it to the size I want, and... Um, this particular mohair comes in about a five or six inch length that's rubber banded. Now this is the end of this one, so you're not going to see that it looks like a thick one or anything. You can see how beautiful this mohair is. It's just very shiny and soft and beautiful, nice colors. Um, and, um, but anyways, then I just cut it in half so that because her hair is not going to be that long, I don't want to waste a lot of mohair that I could save money on and, and use more of. So I cut it in half and then I just make a little U shape with it. I take it, make a U shape. You can see that. And, um, anyway, so then what I do is I basically take my needle and, and the area where the notch is, see this notch that's, and I, I'm sorry, it's not very clear. See the notch. Um, okay. Uh, Lucy be quiet. No bark. Now she has her bark collar on, but she'll bark right through it in it. And she'll, um, she's the only one that just barks incessantly. I don't know what is wrong with that dog. She probably needs more exercise. So I can have my son take her out for a walk when he gets home from school. But, um, anyways, so this pretty little baby, she's, she, her head's still a little bit warm, although she do, she does need her rice sock reheated soon. Um, she's a very cute baby that I'm doing. I think it's the Heather from Bountiful Baby. She's got a really cute face, which I just think she's come out darling. Um, but anyways, uh, so what I do is I get this little loop, and I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted by my dog. Shut up, dog. Sorry. <laughs> my dogs are so driving me crazy. Anyways, um, I take the loop, and I basically just put it in the area where I want to... Um, put a hair and I kind of just catch, I, I aim, uh, the needle, I'm not gonna be able to see this unless I put this like this. Um, sorry. Um, let's see if I can get back a little bit more and excuse me for looking like a complete wreck and the other doll, which I had to stop reading in the middle of the night because he had that was the hair that was dirty, so I ended up having to wash it and let it dry. I take the, the needle, and I kind of aim this little notch in the direction that I want to catch the hair in. So a lot of times I'll aim it at myself and then pull the hair away. And I'm going to catch the hair, like that, push it in, pull back. Take the needle, catch the hair, push it in, pull it back. So basically you're catching that hair on the needle. The notch is going to push it in and pull that back, but keep that, the, this little notch right here on the end of the needle. Oh God, my nails need to be done. Um, take this little 
notch, aim it at the direction in which um, you want to, um, like I aim it at myself usually, and I know it doesn't really show that, but I'm aiming it towards myself. And then just push it in, catch the hair in there, and pull it back. And over time, you will start getting a lot of beautiful rooted hair coming out. Now let's see if I can get that process a little closer. So I've got a little string that's kind of come out of the edge of my loop and I'm not too worried about because I'm going to catch that hair and push it in. I'm going to catch it in my needle. Oh, shoot, it is not really showing up here very well. Hmm, let's try a different angle for better, better lighting. This is a good camera. What the heck? I think I'm too close. Um, anyways, I'm going to catch that little hair inside the, the needle. Blah. And I'm going to put it where I want it and push it in. Um, I'm going to kind of get some more hair out of this, this little loop here. Come on, camera, focus better. This is not working out well. There we up. Oh, almost had it. Come on, camera. Focus. There we go. You can see a little better. Okay, so you see this little hair? I'm going to catch it in my needle. And I'm just going to kind of keep going down the rows along the hair where, um, where the hairline is until I keep filling up these hairlines, basically. And I'm just showing you this. I usually keep it towards me. Um, now, sometimes I'll get these hairs that fall out. See how they're out of the, the little U? So what I do is I just pull them out a little bit and I twist it back around so it kind of remakes the loop. Ta-da! Now it's all new again. See that? None of this really makes sense, I know. So anyways, just keep um, catching your little hair in the edge, push it in, pull it down. Now for me, I mean after about five hours I get tired um, and it'll take a couple of probably nights to do this hair, maybe two or two, two sessions, which could be ten hours or more. <laughs> Depends on the size of the head. Some dolls go real fast because their heads are really tiny. Um, and um, you'll have to excuse my really messy, messy house. I have so many papers that need to be filed. The fireplace is dirty from having fires during all the snow. We need to clean it. Um, but anyways, here's how I'm doing this process. And basically after a while, you'll start having hairs. Make sure if you don't have really good lighting, pull up a nice, big, bright light. And um, you can see I just keep going along. Plugging along, rooting a loop, rooting a loop, rooting a loop, keeping that notch towards myself to keep the, because the um, notch on this needle, and this is a single notch needle, I don't do three notches, I think they look too pluggy. And I really do like the 40, 42 or 46G, 42G or 46G better. This is a bigger needle, but for some reason I've lost two of my packs of needles, so I've got to order new ones. And um, I don't know where the heck they went to. It's driving me bananas. Um, these are bigger needles, but since the hair's blonde, it's not going to show that bad. But I prefer for the darker hairs to use the tinier needles. And basically that is how you root a loop. It's pretty easy. Um, there's another method where people like take your needle and uh, poke it in a whole bunch on your hair. You can either lay it across flat like this and poke a whole bunch of hair in, which I don't do that method. I think it doesn't look good and you might accidentally bend your needle um, in a direction you don't want to bend it and ruin needles, which honestly... These needles from McPherson are pretty good. I've bent them pretty easily. Here's one that I just bent last night. You can see I've accidentally bent it. I can still use it. Sometimes when I try to straighten them out, though, that I break them. And at ten dollars for ten needles or something like that, it's kind of a pricey. 
you know, plus when you consider your shipping. Um, I do get um, some of my needles. Let's see, where do I get them from? I get them from, tell you a really good source. Uh, Dolls So Real has um, really good needles, but right now they're out or very low. Like they don't have the single notch right now, but I think they did have some. I'm going to order some, but just, you know, check them regularly. The ones that I really liked were the, um, let's see here, let me get my invoice. Also real, I really like the uh, 42G Strong German Rooting Fork Needles or the uh, 42G One End Barb Rooting Needle Ultra Fine. That's my favorite, the 42G One End Barb Rooting Needle Ultra Fine. They're six dollars and twenty-five cents for a. I think you get ten in a package or something like that. Very good prices on their needles. I really appreciate their good pricing. Also, they have um really good eyes there. Their acrylic eyes are really cheap. The um, I'm sorry. The uh, what are they called? Uh, real life doll eyes. They're um, very affordable and very pretty. I mean, for your money, it's worth it. All right. Well, I'm going to pull her little um, pantyhose out so I can reheat it. Now, remember, she's got such a big head that I have had to um, uh, put in a washcloth behind the uh, the sock full of rice because um, there it is. Um, I just use a pantyhose, a knee high, filled with rice. This one's kind of in between. It's not too large and it's not too small. Um, I use some white rice. Brown rice seems to smell worse, <laughs> but um, the white rice, I heat it for one minute twice. So I heat it for a minute, then I flip it over in the microwave, and I heat it again for another minute. But that depends on your microwave and how how um, how many watts it is, I suppose. But anyways, I just use this, and I cram it back in my baby's head when it's nice and hot. I'll show you how I do that. Hold on just a minute. I'll go heat this up. Okay, so I'm back. And this sucker is hot. Hot, hot, hot hot tamales. So what I'm going to do is put the baby doll's head down. Okay, and the way that I'm going to um, put this in is I'm going to, this sock has a tight end. I'm going to flip it upside down by holding the pantyhose with my finger even though it's burning hot. And I'm going to tuck the end of this pantyhose in. I'm going to just let the rice kind of fall in to the pantyhose inside. You can see it's steaming. I'm just going to push it in with the end of a toothbrush. It goes into the head quite nicely. Ooh, that's nice and hot. Okay, Ooh, kind of stinks actually. I probably overcooked it a little bit. It's a little overly steamy. I'm going to put this in. because I want to really get that heat pressed up against the um, head so that I can um, get the, uh, the rooting to go in nicely. And now that that's done, let's, uh, sorry about my documents over there. Okay, so what I want to do is basically I'm going to leave this head upside down for a moment and let it um, get warm. So, and basically the area in which I want it to get hot, that is the area where I want to lean the rice against. So if I'm going to root this side of the head, I'm going to lean it that way or this way, you know, basically just let it heat up. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So, just let it warm up for a minute. I'm fairly good at um, 
doing dolls now, getting better all the time. Every day is every every doll is a new experience. Every every doll I've learned so much on, and I really enjoy reborning. It's so much fun. I love kids. I love babies. They're so much fun, and I love this little blonde. She reminds me of my daughter Amber when she was little. Let's see if I can show you a picture of Amber when she was little. Hold on just a minute. Use my fat belly. This is me. So this is my daughter Amber and my son Brennan. These are my two oldest kids. And she was a little blondie with the most beautiful, I know it's hard to tell because the light's shining on it. She had the most beautiful blonde, strawberry blonde hair, almost like gold. Her hair was like the goldest, most beautifulest hair. She was completely born completely blonde. Her eyebrows and eyelashes are so blonde. My son is a redhead. This is Brandon and Amber. These are my two oldest kids. I have other kids. Um, I also have Karamia and Christian, and then I have my grandson Finnegan. And um, anyways, these are my two oldest. <laughs> this baby totally reminds me of Amber, especially when she was a baby. She looks so much like this. We'll see if I can show you something else. Sorry, I'm just sitting here in my pajamas, not my pajamas, my sweats. Um, this is Amber now <laughs> with her baby. She's she's so cute. And this is Sophia, her little baby. They sent me this for Christmas. Isn't that precious? Oh, they're so sweet. My sweet little kids, grandkids. I have two grandkids. So um, basically, excuse me. Those are my, that's Amber. So she reminds me of my daughter Amber. I think I have one other thing I can show you while I'm waiting for her head. Um, let's see if I have it in here. So Amber, oh, there's a picture of Amber when she was in high school. Amber, do I even have that old picture? Do something with it. I have a picture of Brennan and Amber when they were little. I don't know if I have it still. She looks so cute. She looks so much like this little baby. I didn't realize it was gonna she was gonna look so much like her. I don't have it, but she really did look like her a lot. I'd have to go in the living room and get a picture, but I don't really I'm not really up to it right now because it would take digging through a cabinet. But anyways, um, so this baby's nice and warm now, so that means her head is going to be so easy to root. Now my, my other kids have uh, darker hair. Kara and Christian both have brown hair. Kara's is kind of a, a reddish brown. Christian's is more of a brown, chocolate brown. And Finnegan's is more of like a dark brown. Oops. Now, so I take these little... Uh, tufts of hair, fold them in half and get that little U shape. And um, there we go. So I have my little loop. I'm going to hold it tightly and i um, going to just go along um, getting that edge, pulling it, just kind of pulling it down. See how I'm aiming the needle at myself. And um, trying to just root that loop. And over time, you're going to just end up with this beautiful head of hair that you can give a haircut to. Um, some people like their hair longer. Now, my thought is, if you're doing longer hair, and I, I've not really done any babies with long, long hair. My thought is, is you, if you want to use the root -a loop method with a longer piece of hair, I would just make the U right up here. Like fold it over here and root that, root that end right there. 
and leave the rest of it to hang down so that you're not wasting a lot wasting a lot of hair. This is what I'm saying. Gosh, this alpaca hair is beautiful. Isn't that pretty? I think this was the blonde from, uh, did I tell you where it was from? I believe I got that at the Go Baby Doll. Um, they have just the really beautiful hair. Now I did order some from Poland, which I'm waiting for. It's a beautiful alpaca hair that I found on Etsy. It's a Surrey alpaca. It was not cheap. And when I say not cheap, we're looking at probably, you know, $30 for a third of an ounce. Um, now I can take a half an ounce and make it work for several dolls, depending on the hairstyle. But, um, I'm getting quite a collection here. This is my collection of hair, and I do have some different hairs in here. Um, so I'll show you real quick while her head's still heating up. Like um, the Go Baby hair is just beautiful. Like I said, um, this is the blonde. Very beautiful hair. Love their hair. However, um, and this is a brown that I got recently from. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to be doing that on another doll soon and I got this one from them this is their dark blonde but I did it was kind of dirty so I don't I don't know if they just forgot to wash it really well but it seemed to have some dander in it so I washed it out really good now look how beautiful it's looking now it's, it's beautiful shiny gorgeous hair but I was kind of freaked out I was hoping that I didn't want there to be any fleas or anything in it I guess I just get a little bit freaked out about bugs I don't really like bugs very much <laughs> so um, anyways go baby wonderful hair um, I've got some hairs that I've got from uh, Angora Motique and and this is my packaging her she sent it in tissue but um, you can see their hair is really nice quality. This is probably a goat mohair. Um, it's a little bit different texture. It's a little finer. But I really like the Go Baby. Um, and the um, alpaca hair is a little thicker and more shiny. And, and, and now this is shiny and beautiful. I really love it. I've done several dolls. It curls really nice around the finger. Um, I would highly recommend that you send her an order she's got beautiful hair of different colors on her site um, I really enjoy the hair I, there's some other people whose hair I want to do as well this is left over from my Angora Motique black hair that I used it was actually quite beautiful hair it came out really nice on a few of my dolls that sold um, this is Bountiful Babies Brown which kind of turns reddish ugly. It's just, I would say it's a low budget mohair. It's probably good for the beginner just to get the hang of rooting. Um, it doesn't cost a lot. So, and I think you could probably use it for eyelashes and stuff. It's not quite as good quality as the other hairs, but it's a nice, decent, good beginner mohair. It's very cheap. Here's the quality of it. It's it's not as shiny as some of the other, but I'm sure you could condition it if you, but it feels okay. It's okay mohair. It's just not as beautiful as like, say like the Surrey alpaca. Now also here's um, another bountiful baby black. It's okay. Okay mohair. Not as shiny, not as, the quality isn't as good. Sorry, I have an itch. Um, this is my daughter Kara's, uh, I think it's Kara's, uh, brownish red hair. Now, I don't know if I want to use it and anything other than a doll for her. There's her hair. Isn't that beautiful? She's got that beautiful red shimmer in it. So pretty. And then this is, um, also when she dyed her hair a dark kind of dark brownish red, this is her dark brownish red. She decided to chop her hair off and I was like, oh, can I have your hair? <laughs> and here it is. Look how beautiful that is. But I just haven't had a, a purpose for it yet. I'm kind of hanging on to it until I can 
find something like if I want to make her a doll I don't know because of the way that things are nowadays with DNA I'd rather just not use her hair and get her in trouble in any way so I've decided not to use her hair now I might buy some hair on the market and use it I also have some of these tiny rubber bands oops not that but that I can use to you know stick hair together if I need to and um, I use chalk to outline the heads. You can use smaller chalk. This is just some sidewalk chalk I found laying around the house. Um, so that is basically the hair I have now. There's other sources of hair. Um, uh, Slumberland Nursery is supposed to be very good. I do want to try their hair. I'm going to buy some eventually. Um, but she's probably pretty busy because I have tried to email her and not gotten a response, which um, it's kind of sad because I really wanted to ask her some questions about the hair um, that she sells and um, also uh, the um, oh, it's nice and hot now I love it when it's nice and warm like this also there is Delta Dawn Delta Dawn um, she's on eBay I've heard her hair is very good and I'm inspired to use it soon I can't wait to try her hair as well so I just want to mention some of the hairs that I have heard about um, if you sell mohair and you want to put your um, your name in the uh, comments by all means please do because there's lots of people out there willing to try hair now I also bought this other beautiful hair on um, on uh, Etsy and I mean the hair was gorgeous. I cannot wait to get it Let's see if I can find his name Let me look at my um, let's see it's really quick Gosh, I'll have to show you guys when it gets here. I'll do when I root with his hair I will do a tutorial on rooting with his hair. It was absolutely gorgeous and um, it's a guy that I found on Etsy with gorgeous hair. He's from Poland. So if you see a Polish doll hair, <laughs> doll hair seller, that's him. And um, he had just beautiful hair. Some of it was really beautiful Easter egg colors, <laughs> like multicolored hair. And then he had the natural colors and none of it's dyed as far as the natural colors. So that was really exciting because to offer people hair that hasn't had dyes put on it is pretty cool. I mean, as far as if you're into the natural thing and not um, having any chemicals or processed hair. So I'm kind of excited about that. Now, gosh, I do not know what I did with my little chunk of hair. There it is. So anyways, I just want to kind of go over rooting with you and I'm excited to be in the Reborn community. If you're looking for a doll, please do come by, um, check me out on my blog or check me out on um, Reborns. I'm also posting a few on eBay here and there when I have time. So, but since I am a student, I don't have a ton of time right now. I go to university and I'm working on my my bachelor's. I'm almost finished with it. And, and so it's very hard for me to to do a lot of dolls right now, although I am working on a lot of dolls. I have like 10 dolls <laughs> on my table and another four that I'm trying to finish up. And I'm sorry I'm not letting you see me today, but I my hair's up in a bun. I look like a wreck and I just haven't had time to even wash my face yet this morning. So I um, just wanted to, to get back to rooting and talk to you guys and see how you're doing. Now, um, in case you want to keep watching this, it's probably just going to be me talking about things. <laughs> I'm honestly really surprised at some of the ugly dolls out there. I, I don't want to be mean, but you know, some people, I, I, I like think it's great that they're trying to make their own dolls, but I have seen some of the scariest dolls selling for lots of money. And I was like, man, I just can't see myself buying a doll that looks like that. And I wish that, um, 
I know it's sad, but I wish that some people just wouldn't make dolls because they, they're, they're not doing a good job. <laughs> they need to do some more tutorials before getting out there and, and putting out dolls that look scary as like a, they look monstrous. I just, it freaks me out. If your doll doesn't look like a real baby, I don't know if you should be selling dolls, you know? I mean, don't put dolls out that don't look like real children. Is that mean? I'm so mean. I shouldn't even say that. But I just saw some of the scariest looking dolls the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh, what were they thinking? Why are they putting that doll out? It's embarrassing to yourself if you're starting a nursery you should wait until your quality is good, you know, before you go putting out, I mean, at least do a couple before you put out that first one that looks scary as all get out. Like my very first doll, I think he looked like Chucky a little bit <laughs> or she, but I shouldn't have done that doll. It was, um, it was the Celeste doll from Bountiful Baby. It is absolutely not the cutest doll ever. It's got an open mouth. I tried to redo it recently and it still looks kind of weird. Like I did do it and she looks okay. And I hand painted her hair cause I'm practicing my hand painting, but like, I don't know if I would try to charge that much money for her cause she's not that stupendous, you know? <laughs> I mean, I have to admit if my doll looks funky, it looks funky. I'm not going to charge as much money for it. Um, but, and I, I feel so bad because some people are so desperate for a cheap doll, you know, they'll buy those ugly ones. And I just feel so sorry for them that they get stuck with a doll that isn't good quality, you know, or hasn't had a lot of work put into it to where it actually looks realistic. But I mean, maybe if they get the therapy out of it that they need, that's great. I, I don't even like sounding like that. That like makes me sound like I'm being rude, but I just don't think some people should be making dolls. They, their dolls look scary. And, and one thing that really bothers me about dolls that some people make is when they root eyelashes, they go all the way out to the edge. I mean, there's no doll, there's no baby in the, that ever has eyelashes that go this far out. I mean, the eyelashes should be from about here forward. And these people make these dolls with like ridiculously over rooted eyelashes. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, I mean, is that weird for me to be so like judgmental? I'm trying not to judge as a Christian. I shouldn't be judging, but like people don't make your dolls eyelashes look retarded. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I guess I'm being kind of whiny and prissy and picky, but I'm so picky. I just, I can't imagine why anybody would think that like that would look realistic. And I just don't know why people do it. And I want to mention it because I think people should pay attention to that. Like don't make your eyelashes look like they go on like a train track. Like they go on forever. They should be like realistic and be, um, proportionate to the eye. Okay. So that's me in my, I don't normally sound judgmental, but that was me just whining because I see people do that all the time and it drives me nuts. Like, it's like, dude, really? Why would you put eyelash eyelashes all the way out to like practically like the, the end of the, the, the eye that's not where they should be. It would look dumb if I put eyelashes all the way out to here. It should only be to about right there where the, where the real, I mean, look at your eye. You have a little crack at the end of it, but like people like pay attention to those small things. I know that maybe I sound like a jerk, but you know, babies shouldn't have eyelashes that go out to the end of the universe. It just doesn't look right. <laughs> I know I'm being so stupid right now and whiny. Anyways, I just thought you'd like to see some rooting and how I do it. And yes, this does take a long time. It takes hours on end. Usually I'll watch a movie or listen to some of my lectures. 
which helps me um, double use my time. And I'm frustrated because I'm going through some stuff right now. After 15 years, um, my husband is a wonderful man and we have a great relationship, but um, dealing with some tax stuff right now that's frustrating the crap out of me. Probably going to be moving to try to downsize our lifestyle because so we can pay more money to the IRS because they love us and it is super frustrating um, when you're dealing with the IRS. So that's where I'm at right now. Have an attorney working that stuff out. Every year we have to renegotiate stuff with them. It's super frustrating, you know. So anyways, my life's going to be changing a lot this year, making a lot of, um, a lot of changes in our life and our lifestyle in order to satisfy the IRS. So we will be doing that and it really sucks. But anyways, so that's just life in a nutshell. So how's your life? <laughs> I just wondered say hi to me let me know what your life is all about because like my life is just school and dealing with the IRS and dealing with kids and that's and and trying to keep my husband sane because he works an insanely hard and difficult job and he's a he's not just a programmer but he's like um, someone who does uh, architectures for programs. He's like the person who writes all the algorithms and does business intelligence and stuff like that. And um, a, uh, artificial intelligence and, and um, data and stuff like that. He's super smart, but he also has a very, very stressful job. So I try to keep the man from going crazy because he probably does feel kind of crazy. Um, and then he has to come home and deal with me and I'm a great person. Like I'm a Christian, I have a good heart and everything, but I, I do have some anxieties. <laughs> so certain things will make me feel really crazy and he'll come home and I'll be like, baby, all these things are going on. It's driving me crazy. I don't know. I just let stuff get to me, I guess. It's a tough world. There's a lot of bad things going on in it. And it's kind of freaky, you know, to live in this world and not worry about where your kids are going to be, you know, what are they going to be dealing with? What kind of wars are they going to have to fight? And, you know, worrying about um, terrorists and things like that. It's very scary. And all these politics and, oh, I hate politics. My husband loves talking about politics. He's very passionate about his beliefs and he's a very intelligent man he's really introduced me to a lot of um good knowledge and good understanding of politics um he'll go on if you talk to the man about politics he'll go on for hours hours i i cannot talk about politics as long as he in fact i get bored of it and i get frustrated because he just wants to talk about it for so long he doesn't realize other people aren't as interested in politics as him <laughs> so um anyways he's also a musician he's super bright and i just love him for that and believe it or not i met him online how weird is that met my husband on match.com by accident. I went out with this asshole named Mike who wasn't really a bad guy. He was actually a nice guy, but he turned out to be a cheater. And, um, his mom wanted him to go out with some girl in Pennsylvania or somewhere where, wherever his mom lived and his dad was sick. So he was, even though we'd been going out quite a while, he was, um, going back home to see his dad and I think he was dating her on the side and um so anyways Mike uh and I split up after he decided to be a cred head and anyways so I didn't date for a few years and I wasn't really into dating I was taking some time for me I went to school 
I was working my job and um, basically taking some me time to not date and to focus more on myself and my children. And um, so I was a single mom for a while. Mike and I did not have any children together, by the way. I'd already had two children at that point. And um, maybe I had three. I can't remember. Yeah, three kids. But um, anyways, so I didn't date for a long time. So my ex, who is not Mike, another guy that I dated, he um, and I had a child. And um, we decided that. I decided that he wasn't for me, but he signed me up for match because he thought after two years I should be dating and that, you know, he couldn't believe I wasn't out meeting people because he was. So he signed me up for uh, Yahoo Personals and I was like, this place is a meat market. I'm not interested. I had all these creepy guys trying to like pick up on me and just, it was really a meat market. It was disgusting. I just didn't want to be part of it. So then somehow uh, he got me looking at Match, and somehow I got signed up for Match. I don't know if I did that myself or if he did it because it was so long ago, I really don't remember. And um, so I met a few really nice people through Match, and Match was okay, but a lot of the people that I met who were intelligent actually worked and were very, very hard to get out to see because they were... One was an, one that I met that I got along with really well was an engineer, and he was a water chemical um, like engineer, the kind of guy that goes out and cleans up like spills and things. So I never could get on a date with the guy, but he was really cool. He seemed to like horses. He had a horse um, stable, and he had horses, and he was really seemed really nice and intelligent. Just didn't work out though. We never could get together, so. Anyways, um, one day after having some uh, different experiences, um, and as you'll see, I'll take this and fold it over when it comes out of the loop. The hairs do eventually get kind of unruly, and I just kind of get them back. Just keep folding them into a loop. <laughs> May not be a perfect loop, but anyways, so one day I got this email. And the and matches all. This is your, these are your, your good, your like hundred percent or ninety nine, ninety eight percent matches or something. And um, I had gotten dozens of these emails before, so I really honestly didn't pay attention to these. And I don't even know. I think it was just fun to look at stuff and for me. So, anyways, I saw this email and there's this dorky guy he had like a bird on his shoulder and. Or a couple of birds on his shoulders or something. I was like, that's silly. You know, that guy looks funny. I can't believe he likes birds. You know, I don't know. So anyways, I clicked on his picture. And it took me to his profile. And he was into computers, which I was into computers. And um, had been going to school for computers. And was working in the field of being an information analyst. And um, so I said, well, hey, you know would you like to be friends? Cause I noticed you like computers and you know, maybe there's stuff we can talk about. So we'd start talking about stuff and start being friends more and more. I didn't meet him in person for probably five, five or six weeks. And, um, but in the meantime, I noticed he was kind of odd, <laughs> kind of a loner type. And, um, but he was really nice and we got along and he was very sweet. We would, uh, chat on Yahoo. Uh, it was like Yahoo had like a video application at the time. So we chatted on that. And um, I don't know, we just had a lot of fun. We laughed a lot. He played piano for me a lot over um, Yahoo's um, things, so um, which I really enjoyed. And I didn't realize just how talented this man really truly was. He's super talented in the music department. Um, he's so talented that I bought him drums for Christmas. And um, anyways, um, so we ended up um, finally meeting in person. 
at Starbucks, and that was really fun. We had a we had a good time. He was kind of this big dorky guy, and um, really funny, kind of silly, goofy guy. He wore a Dilbert shirt, so I knew he was a nerd, like a total geek, computer geek, and um, yeah, so he had his Jean Dilbert shirt on. And, um, but we had so much fun. We laughed so much and we just enjoyed each other. And so we had so much fun that later that day, um, we all went to a movie. Uh, I had my kids though. So we ended up going and seeing a, uh, some kind of movie that was family friendly. And, uh, we went out to Chili's to eat, which was fun. And we just hit it off. We just had so much fun together. We laughed and enjoyed each other. We liked a lot of the same things because I like sci-fi stuff and we both like tech stuff, technology stuff. And we like, um, uh, definitely like sci-fi movies and things like that and games. We like games. We play video games. I know it's crazy. I'm an old lady, but we love video games. Um, so, you know, we just, we hit it off and we ended up getting married. Like we couldn't get married at first because this is and believe it or not, he was going through a divorce. His ex-wife, um, who I'm actually friends with to this day, <laughs> she um, and he were not to living together. They were living on the same property in separate houses, and um, they hadn't fully finalized their divorce, and she was kind of depending on him fully for her income, which I do understand. And anyways, uh, the when his divorce paper came they they weren't right the judge turned down his divorce so he had to send him back out and um this girl kind of saw me she <laughs> sort of i think at first she sort of saw me as a threat because her her existence kind of depended on him and you know but um so every time i was there she'd be like rubbing her leg on him and stuff and he, I, like he didn't really notice i think he's my husband is kind of like a very, what is the word for it? He is one of those people who, he's very absent-minded. So he doesn't notice things like, and so I told him, I'm like, you didn't even notice she's rubbing her leg on you. And he's like, oh, I didn't even notice it. I mean, like he is kind of like that still to this day. But I was like, dude, you need to cut the string. You either cut the string with your, your, your wife who you're separated from or and and get this divorce finalized or I'm splitting up with you because I don't want to be in a this kind of relationship you know um you know we had talked about getting married and I, I really don't want to be in this relationship where we're not truly devoted to one another you know which he was devoted to me but with her always doing things <laughs> Made it kind of hard but anyways um so they ended up uh she moved away after a while and um got married to some other guy she had been probably cheating on him having extramarital activities at that point with other people before they even split up i think and um but anyways we uh, got married that was 15 years ago and um, we have just been doing great ever since we've had a couple of small things happen but nothing major just him going through some stressors in his life and um, me having a few stressors too and being stupid <clears throat> so together we've worked it out and we get along really well I can see match did a good job I'm kind of surprised <laughs> but uh, we, we, we are matched very well. We, we like a lot of the same things. We're both Leos, which is kind of odd. We like nice furnishings, and uh, we like eating out. We like going to the movies. Um, we love doing things with our kids when we can. We're both kind of lazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm not lazy, but I'm not... Um, like, we both like to enjoy things, you know, like, um, 
as far as being pampered, maybe things like that. But we're both good people. He works really hard. He's super intelligent, and um, he's had a really tough childhood growing up, as did I. So in that, we're very similar. We have similar um, backgrounds, which is kind of weird. Wow, look how beautiful this head of hair is turning out. Isn't that beautiful? I know it's hard to see. Almost her whole front of her hair is done. And I have just blabbed my head off to you, and I hope that you've gotten to know me a little bit. Like, I feel kind of bad about whining earlier about people's bad-looking dolls, but I just feel like, you know, people shouldn't sell their first few dolls. I think they should keep them as a reminder of where they were, and they should um, move forward and sell their dolls that are a little bit more acceptable as far as quality goes. And I'm sorry for complaining to the world. I probably shouldn't have said anything. But I'm a very honest person, and I feel like honesty is the best policy. I'm not saying be so brutally honest that you hurt people. But I do think that you should be honest about your feelings and not hide things about how you feel because that can just lead to problems in the long run. And uh, so I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to root. I hope you enjoyed listening to me drone on. And I hope that this watching me root this uh, baby has helped you, um, or root this reborn doll, has helped you to understand how to root especially root a loop. I think it goes really fast compared to the other methods, which I don't really like. Um, so I hope that you can see how beautiful the hair comes out when you do it this way. Um, just keep working at it until you get it down and your dolls will start looking real beautiful. And then the next step is learning um, how to cut hair. And there's lots of videos on how to do that. Um, one of the best videos I've seen that could help people who don't have a clue is um, I think Jackie Ortiz has a nice video on how she cuts and styles her baby's hair. And maybe one of these days I'll do one as well. I, I like watching Jackie. She's she's a super talented um, young lady. And um, her wife also is very talented. And I love watching them. They're fun to listen to, to see their babies and their package, their baby openings. And um, it's so much fun watching them. I, I enjoy watching them. Also, um, I really have loved um, Sweet Potato Pie Nursery Lady. She has great um, hair painting tutorials. I, I like um, listening to her. So many great people out there. And um, just... Oh, and I think, um, by the way, Jackie Ortiz's wife is um, in love with Reborns 2000-something. <laughs> You'll find her. She's on um, YouTube. But anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed um, seeing how I root hair. And I hope that um, you learned something great. And, and you know, this is still hot. So I'm just, you know, this thing the little thing that I put in the baby's head will stay nice and warm for a long time so make sure you get yourself a pantyhose fill it with some rice and uh, start rooting that baby just get on it don't be scared get out there and practice the only way to get good at this stuff is to practice it is an expensive hobby but after a couple of dolls you'll start getting it down and um, you might it might take you two or three dolls you know, in my opinion, the first 10 are all learning dolls, you know, and, and each one you learn to be really careful not to make mistakes because um, they're costly. They're costly and um, you can't afford to make those mistakes if you're trying to sell these babies. If you're just making it for yourself or a family member, that's one thing, but, you know, when you're spending $100, $200 or more, on a doll and all the clothes and all the the hair alone can be like 60 bucks not including all the time you spend rooting it you got to get good at it and you got to you know take your time and learn how to do it right or else you know you're going to just be wasting your money and um 
if, if you feel like that's not something you want to do, then just buy one because there are people that just don't, they know they can't spend that kind of money. It's better for them just to buy one already made and not to bother trying to make one. But if you want to make one, you're going to have to spend a little money to, to buy all the materials to get started. You can't get discouraged when the first two turn out kind of shabby. You want to just keep going, keep practicing, buy the cell dolls until you can get <clears throat> really good. And that way when you're once you're really good, you can buy the expensive dolls, you know, and start doing those. But you want to get to that point where you know what you're doing. You don't have to follow tutorials anymore. Um, oh, by the way, some of the best tutorials um, to start out with is um, Kim from uh, CustomDollBaby.com. She has a ton of great videos to get started with. If you're trying to learn to be an artist um, or you are an artist and it's just a new art form for you, go check out her videos. She's got tons of learning videos. Wonderful, wonderful uh, instruction. I just, I'm so thankful to her for so many of the techniques that I have because she's helped me develop them. Now, I don't use all of her techniques, but I use a good portion of them. I mean, she gave me a foundation on which to start reborning. And I think, um, I think you could, if you don't have a clue, it's a good place to start. She, you know, helps you understand how to order your doll parts, how to check them over when you get them in, how to clean them, um, what kind of paints to use, how to get your rooting started. Um, she's just a, a fountain of information for a new reborn artist, and I would highly recommend that you go to her. No, 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 no barky bark. Come on now. And um, so definitely check her out. And I'm going to go because my dog's going to start barking out of control as always. But I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Take care. And come back and visit me soon. This is Kimberly with Snuggle Babies Nursery. Checking out.